Is it okay if we have an org? Yes. 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 Yeah. We go in agreement, yes. possibly, to have an org so we can have all these terminals for our PCs and for yes. ourselves. Yes. Yes. Good. I'm in agreement with it. You guys agree? All right. So you don't want a big org. So you don't want a big org. Right, well, I don't think he meant, and, I, and I'm going to talk for you, but I certainly didn't meant a duplicate of the Church of Scientology. <laughs> See, this this was the biggest difference. You know, when I got in when I got into the church in 1969, 70, the the viewpoint was, uh, I walked in there and it was like, what could we do for you? Right now, when you walk into the Church of Scientology, is what could you do for us? We need some more stats, we need some more money, we need to sell some books. What could you do for us? In other words, you serve them, they don't serve you. And uh, the org I'm looking at is that, that service org uh, that was originally there. That, that's what we're talking about. Great, you know, the church has some good points besides all that. All right, yeah. right. we got it, we got good. it. Uh, I would like to mention here something about that. To have small organizations, I mean, one, two, three men, band, Joe, that was a solution to the attacks of the church. And I'm not against field auditors and such people, but we need good running orgs. But that means not suppression. But we need the orgs, I tell you. We cannot get uh, along if we don't build up orgs, real orgs. And that's technology. This is what Hubbard put there. It's not just something I say now, and only because we have been suppressed in the church and it was misused, it doesn't mean it's bad, not at all. Well, I just want to make a comment. I think the orders would be good for the training, uh, the training and the training. law particularly to have that because you're not, it's very hard to get a training when it requires big courses to be viable. Right. When, when the way, um, uh, when, when LRH came out with a uh, flag executive briefing course, he told how he went from a few centers to centers all around the world. And he said it, he, he did this formula here where he had, where there was a lot of field auditors, and a lot of FSMs, and a lot of missions feeding the orgs. Right now, in the Church of Scientology, there's only one big org. Everybody else is a feeder group. Funny, right? So we got to get back to this pattern here. If we want to help the people of Earth here and expand, you had a question? I, I just wanted to add to this. Like when we talk about the work, I wanted to remind by the definition, can you help me? The, de the definition of the work is basically terminals, channels between terminals, right? Connected with line of communication, communication line. So we are not talking buildings. And when we talk work, I really suggest we say virtual work. Virtual connection. Communication lines can be internet communication lines, right? The terminals, exactly as you see them, two or three people there, two or three or five people there, you know, those are the terminals. They can exist in physical universe in different places, different Okay, okay. Let me stop you there. Yeah, I, no, no, virtual orgs don't work. Well, no, um, I misunderstand. It's not, it's not perfect. It's like those communication lines from one, you don't have to have them in the building. A light organization All right, let, let me explain something here. I got, I got what you guys are saying, but you, you look at these people up here. These people who got trained. These, yeah, I'll let you I'll give a chance. These people who got trained in an org, and I got trained in an org, and it took a long time to train me. 
I mean, I was in there for months on the briefing course. I needed an ethics officer. I had to do the briefing course twice. I, <laughs> I needed t t different terminals to, to deal with me, because I was out of the case. And uh, so if I was to, you know, was somebody like me was to start over again in the field, I would make it because that person, beginning person, needs all these terminals. They need to go in there and they need to see all these people involved. And that's, that's the benefit of the convention because we all get to see that we're all involved still, which is good. They are, they are. And, it's, it's uh, let me finish, let me finish. Yeah. Anyway, these people got trained because there was an org, and if you want to get trained, I think we should go back to the same pattern. I mean, if we want to train, uh, and there's nothing wrong with the units being out there because that's what's needed. Did you want to say something? When people are together, they are multi multiplying their data. And it's only happening when there is an org or a group close together. That does not work on the internet or on long distance. I have seen it so many times in all those camps we have made. People come together, they are trained. The amount of theta around there is just incredible. It's overwhelming. People went home and when we hugged each other and say we go home now, it happens many times. People are in tears and they said, it's like falling in love on the third dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's amazing. I agree with everyone. <laughs> I think there should be organizations beautifully the way Scientology was in the old days. He's totally right. Being on the briefing course at St. Hill in Sussex, England for a year was magic. Magic. All kinds of magic occurred. That needs to be available. And I think we should all postulate that that is available. Small groups need to be available. They were available in the old days. They need to be available again. I agree. All of it needs to be available. Anything that excites an individual, anywhere they can go to have the thrill of being part of a third dynamic. I very much agree with this very elegant gentleman. And I think there, ha there doesn't need to be any conflict. We are OTs. We can create it all. Yes, I agree with that too. I agree with everybody. I think, as I was saying in my talk earlier yesterday about how when I came in, there were little groups and there were big groups. There was orgs and there were uh, centers. And it didn't matter. There wasn't any competition. There wasn't any um, ill will. People could go where they wanted to go. They would be welcome. Uh, the org had or the policy org superior image where people who were more trained were nice to the people out in the field and said, well, send us your failed cases and we'll patch them up. What we're doing at the Life Enhancement Center is in a way similar because we have advanced trained people and we have people who do the lower bridge and we have new people, we have courses, we have an academy and it's growing in its own, at its own pace. So we're not trying to rush into being a big org. We like being small, but we're training people to be able to come into the group and grow. So I think it works both ways. I think one of the most common um, phenomena in the church for the last 30, 35 years has been the uh, discouragement of individual initiative. I mean, we've seen time and time again where individuals kind of catch fire with the tech and they want to do this or that and then they get hamstrung or bogged down or screwed around one way or the other and end up uh, a lot of brilliant ideas and brilliant uh, uh, groups, you know, such as uh, Second Chance and uh, these other little entrepreneurial groups that uh, sprung up or just get attacked and uh, put down. Um, so I don't think there's any uh, individual, there isn't any one model that's going to work for everybody. I think what's going to happen is that people 
get inspired and they, there's a certain kind of thing they want to do, there's a certain kind of public they want to, they want to have, they want to have a big org, they want to have a small field group, they want to have a virtual org, they want to see us, they want to audit, they want to train, they want to have an FSM group, and they will just do it because there's nobody stopping anybody from doing any of these things. And, um, you know, like Ellery said about the, the mission network originally, he said, well, we don't have to pay too much attention to them because, you know, either they'll succeed or they'll fail on their own steam, you know, they'll either uh, have wins and grow, which they always do when they're doing it standardly, or else they will, um, you know, just kind of fade away and, and uh, not be there anymore because they aren't really doing it standardly. So that's what I, that's what I think really is what I see is that, uh, you know, you've got uh, associated terminals and some are creating big groups and some small. One of my PCs is Helen Chen and she's got uh, a group in uh, Taiwan. I'm auditing her on her L10 right now and uh, she's got 130 staff in uh, Taiwan. And uh, she just opened a second office and that second office is doing well. She's got like 12 books that she's written. She does TV interviews with <laughs> She's got a movie out. You know, that's what she wants to do. No, nobody's stopping her. She, she was the FSM, one of the top FSMs in the church for years. And just always had trouble, always had problems. You know, she was being attacked constantly. Nobody's attacking her now. You know, she's just on fire and doing exactly what she wants to do with the tech. And I think that's the future of the tech. What does each of us want to do individually with what we know and what we feel? And that's where it's going to happen. Thank you. Thank you.